how much do you pay for it? If you don't mind me asking, that's a question that I've heard so many times in the last couple of months since we bought the car. Um, anything from um, co-workers, friends, uh, family members, even my neighbors, a couple of neighbors that I hardly know came up and asked me and it always ends up like, how much do you pay for it? So in today's video, I'm gonna answer that question. That's a very easy question to answer actually because unlike other car brands, Tesla will list the prices of their vehicles on their website, not the MSRP, but the actual purchase price. You can literally go to the website, pick a model, computer to your liking and place the order knowing exactly how much you will pay for it. And because Tesla uh, doesn't have their own financial services company like Ford does with Ford Motor Credit or GM with GM Financial, Tesla gives you the option to finance your car with Wells Fargo. You also have the option of paying for it with your credit card, but I mean, who's got that type of credit limit on their credit card, right? But you could. But another option is to bring in your own pre-approval, typically from a credit union, like I've done many times in the past. In this case, we went with Tesla, Wells Fargo, I mean, with Tesla's offering, which is Wells Fargo, because they offer me a rate that not even my credit union could touch. It was at 2.49%, and that's a pretty good rate, but for that, you have to have an excellent credit score, which in this case, I do. In this video, I'm gonna concentrate on the facts of our purchase. If you watch my last video, I mentioned that the pricing strategy of the Tesla website, which defaults to potential savings, is an absolute joke. Um, it includes all potential incentives available in your state and also a $2,100 estimated in gas savings. And I think that math should be left to be solved by the customer. Yes, you do save some money compared to gas vehicles, but at least in our particular case, we bought the Model Y for the experience and time will tell if we saved any money, if anything, for driving a, an electric vehicle versus a comparable gas engine car. If you have watched my other videos, then you know that how we option our Tesla Model Y. We ordered the performance, which has a list price of $60,990. And we went, we went with the pearl white, uh, which is included in the base price and we picked the black and white interior, which is another $1,000. We didn't want to order the full self-driving capability because I strongly believe that it is not self-driving to begin with. And $10,000 is too much money for us. And it's a feature that at this moment feels more like a dog and pony show that doesn't really do what the name says. And I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Autopilot is an amazing feature that, that we love and it's enough for us and it's included in the price. Uh, please let me know in the comments if any of you has the autonomous driving and if you think it's worth the premium. There's another charge of $1,200 named destination and document fee and a $100 order fee, which is non-refundable. The grand total of this is $63,290. Wow. That's a lot of money. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. A big chunk of what you pay goes to finance charges, sales tax, and closing costs or processing fees. Financing a depreciating asset is never a good idea, right, Dave Ramsey? But if you must because you like nice cars and you like to buy them new, then I advise you that when thinking about the down payment, consider paying for at least the sales tax and processing fees. In our case, the sales tax amounted to $4,904.98 and something called the official fees or money that Tesla collects for the government were a total of $710 for a grand total of $5,614.98. And remember that Tesla vehicles no longer qualify for the federal tax credit. Keep that in mind when choosing your, to go electric. Other comparable vehicles from other brands still qualify for it. And uh, the only rebate that the Model Y qualifies at the moment, at least in California, is the clean fuel reward, which is $1,500. And another one that is for $2,000 from the clean vehicle rebate project. Both of these rebates are exclusive to California. There's another rebate for which some Californians may qualify and it's for first, for first responders and teachers. That's uh, potentially another $1,000. The California Clean Fuel Vehicle Reward rebate is instantaneous, but the other two take a very long time, time to process. We're still waiting for a $2,000 rebate. Uh, what, two months later? I live in California, San Diego precisely. So the total price of the car is affected by a combined tax of 7.75%, which explains us paying 
close to $5,000 in sales tax alone. I know that this will vary depending on what state or country you live in. And I'm particularly interested to know if some of you paid a lot more or a lot less than what I paid. Please let me know in the comments. Another enormous chunk of money goes to financing. We decided to finance our Tesla Model Y for 72 months or six years. And that's a bad idea because at 72 months, we will be upside down on our loan for a very long time, meaning the longer term, a longer term like this um, doesn't even keep up with the rate of depreciation of the vehicle, but that's what felt comfortable for us at the time of purchase. We put down $8,931.98 and our monthly payment is $874.99. That's one big monthly payment. Our prior Lexus RX350 was also financed also for six years and the payment was 734, but uh, the gas expenses were a little bit higher. So I guess at the end with recharging the Model Y, it kind of evens out, but let me remind you that overall, we're not saving anything. Actually, we're spending more. And as I told you before, it will take a very long time to offset what we paid in sales tax alone for this car. But the biggest of all costs is depreciation. Typically, new cars depreciate a lot within the first three years. And my guess is that electric vehicles will not age gracefully. Therefore, I project that our Tesla Model Y will, will free fall in value once the battery starts losing range. If we were to keep this vehicle for the duration of the loan, we will have paid a total of $4,000 $596.28 in finance charges. The total cost of our purchase on credit after all those 72 payments will be $73,531. But history tells me that we won't be keeping the car for that long, maybe three years, which may have you wondering how come we did enough to lease instead of buying, which would allow us to pay way less down payment and per month it would be about $6,000 down and a monthly payment of $745 for three years and about 12,000 miles. The short answer is I just didn't want that three-year commitment that is required as this past year has been really crazy and it has taught me to live the present and I just don't know where we are going to be in three years. Our situation can change from one moment to the next and I just didn't want to be attached to, suit, to such a burden for that long. It's really hard to walk out of a lease. I mean you can but it's hard. Maybe in the future I can make you a video of how leasing a car, in this case a Tesla, can be a better option than buying, um, especially for those of us that don't keep a car past initial warranty. And if you want to see a video like that, please let me know in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. It's a great way to support me. And if uh, you're planning to order a Tesla vehicle, please go to my description box where I included a referral code that will give you a thousand miles of free supercharging. Thank you and I'll see you next time.